Hello and welcome back to this course on fundamentals of data science and today we are going to have some interesting topic for our discussion. In fact, this is nothing but a very basic topic, it is on the data itself. What is a data and what are the types of data like structured, unstructured and data analysis. These are some of the contents for today's discussion in which we are going to talk about datas and we are going to understand more about the data itself, the types of datas, how data is related to knowledge and wisdom. And uh, we do have many datas that are analog right and digital. So, how we are actually performing this analog and digital signals as analog and digital datas. So, let us start with the basic word data. Well, the word data is very intriguing these days like because even before 200 years the word data is not used much, but just imagine last 50 years, how about last decade? Well, it has been used a lot and lot of variants of data has been used. Data scientist, we have data science. Likewise, many other things have been added to the data like big data, database, there are a lot of other stuff you can think about how the data word has been actually changed. And we do get data from many different sources. So, at this point I like to tell you about one documentary, it is called uh, Joy of Data. It is a documentary series from BBC. I recommend you to watch, maybe you can also watch this in the YouTube, it is available. It is one of the wonderful documentary series, it is just around one hour, but it has a very good information about the very basis for data. They give you a lot of descriptions about data and how data is actually changing the world today. Every step that, that you make is being counted as data, right? Like for example, if you have the wristband, every step, every heartbeat is being counted. Yes, things have been changing a lot in these days. And one in interesting point that you will also find is that the data with the data like uh, if you talk about mice, if you talk about fungi, if you talk about hairspray and about 90 percentage or 95 percentage of everything else with a Wikipedia page, there is something common among them. What is that? Philosophy. If you just click on the first link of Winky page, then keep on clicking the first link of every Wikipedia page to which you will be taken. Keep on linking, I mean, keep on clicking. Finally, you end up with the page philosophy. You start from fungi, you, you keep on clicking the first Wikipedia page the first link again and again you will be taking back to philosophy. That is interesting right, that is one of the interesting observation. So, likewise there are a lot of other interesting features that you can think about when it comes to data. Data or general concept refers to the fact that some existing information or knowledge is represented or coded in some form for suitable for better usage or processing. Why do we need to understand data? That is another important question. So, we use a report on data in everyday life right without necessarily realizing it. For example, you might wonder like maybe you are asking how much, how much does it cost or how often, how little lot of other questions we are asking. In fact, we are asking for data. So, if you take into the next level, the data can 
cannot only be reported on, but it can also be turned into information from which evidence based decisions can be made. But data is useless without the skill to understand and interpret the data. So, we should know how to understand it and how to actually interpret the data that is in hand. Let us briefly talk about some types of data. Like we have qualitative data, like he is tall and handsome, he has short hair, he has a lot of power, it is like qualitative information. And in quantitative information, we have a discrete and continuous data. He has two legs, he has four brothers or discrete information. They have a specific digits or numbers given to us. And continuous data, he weighs nine, I mean 59.5. He is 160 centimeters tall. Especially weight and height, these are continuous variable. So, we it changes continuously at any point of time for anyone. So, that is why we call it as continuous variable. Not only that, we can also think about other data like counting cars. As you can see here in this road, you want to find how many cars pass by a certain point on a road in a 5 minute interval, calculating the number of cars movement. Yes, it is again the data and these data can be of more significance. Like one of the researchers uh, found that just by counting cars in one of the cities, they can eventually recommend the city administrations about where to build the next apartment, where to have the next subway station, so on and so forth. It is just collecting the data. Understanding data more on this information, let us look at this figure here. As you can see, we have data and data analysis is the process of synthesizing and summarizing the data and turning it into a meaningful information. So, statics, statistics or results of analysis of data and are usually collated in tables, charts and reports. So, that is where we analyze right. So, statistics provide us with clear objective, numerical data on important characteristics or performance. So, as we get the data initially and then you report this information with various statistical methods for analysis. So, when you do these statistical methods, you in fact can infer certain knowledge out of this data from the observations and you can actually usually also see the evidence of it. So, here is an example of this uh, qualitative and quantitative data. Here is the quantitative data. This information can be reduced to a set of numbers here from which we can create an average because you have the set of numbers there. You can create an average if you want. You can actually calculate the percentage. If you want, you can calculate the difference. You can calculate the like various other mathematical values you can create and statistical model you can use. That is with the quantitative. How about qualitative data? Here is the qualitative data. So, qualitative data tend to be collection of thoughts, observations at times. It can be just uh, feelings, emotions or experience. So, it can be useful to answer questions about uh, what, how, why rather than how many or how much because it is not numeric. Sometimes qualitative data can be turned into a quantitative data by assigning numbers to categories that can be done as well. Well, that is 
about these two important types of data. Let us move further on here, data fundamentals and terminologies. So, as you can see here in this table, it is a very typical table and uh, from now on you will be looking at various tables or in other words various data sets. So, always remember we call these as data sets, they are huge data sets we will be looking at and these are the data units. So, every single entry that you have, in this case the student's name, individual names is a data unit. So, it may also be referred as a data record or a case or just a row. Then comes the data items or variables. So, data items is a characteristics of a data unit uh, which can be measured or classified. It is also known as a variable because uh, it has various characteristics. So, that is about the data item. Then you have certain observations. So, observations of the data item has been recorded about a data unit. So, you can see how the data unit, data item and observations they are interrelated and overall all the collections together we call it as a data set. Okay, here is where we are going to think about how data, knowledge and wisdom they are or interrelated. So, knowledge of understanding data is very vital. Knowledge is the understanding based on extensive experience dealing with information on a particular subject. Let us take this example here. The height of Mount Everest is generally considered as a data. The height can be measured precisely with the altimeter and enter into database. Now, you have the height. Apart from height, you may have several other definitions. What are the informations that you need? That can be the information about various paths that you can take or other informations about uh, maybe you need to check your oxygen level, maybe there is some ways to do that. Apart from that as you can see in this figure, you can always consider uh, analytical point of view like at every point of time, like every altitude like maybe 5000 to 6000 meter, 6000 to 7000 meter, 7000 to 8000 meter what are the different uh, ranges or what are the various uh, circumstances that you can come across during that range. When I say circumstances, maybe some difficulties, maybe some storms or what is the basically what is the weather conditions. Yes, those weather data are of prime importance while you climb Mount Everest. So, these data uh, may be included in a book along with other data on Mount Everest to describe about the mountain in a manner useful for those who wish to make decisions about methods to climb it. An understanding based on the experience climbing mountain that could be a advice persons on way to reach the Mount Everest peak. So, this may be termed as a knowledge. Once you have this experience and once you have this understanding of those data, we are actually considering this information as a knowledge. The practical climbing of Mount Everest peak based on this knowledge may be seen as the wisdom. Let me put it another way, maybe more easier way to understand how it can be done. Well, uh, you know that you have a data about uh, say the number of vehicles on the road and you learnt or you have the information that whenever you cross the road you are going to look right side, you are going to look left side and if there is a green signal you are going to 
walk in your pedestrian path. Well, you are already at the road. Now you got the, you already have the information on what to do, right? Information, or in other words, the data you already have. And now you know that uh, you are going to act based on what you already know, based on your experience. So you see the red, green signal for the pedestrian, and now you are going to uh, walk. And you know that when there is a car or a other thing comes in, you have to take actions. So that is where the actual practical implementation comes in. Now actually on looking at the green signal you are walking, which means that you have understanding based on the experience of walking along the road several times and you might also be guided by other people in the past on how to walk. Maybe you raise your hand and then you walk across. So this is the knowledge. But apart from that, at times there may be some challenges while crossing. Maybe somebody is coming at a high speed and there is another motorcycle coming in between and some disaster is about to happen and at that time you may have to use your knowledge in a way that it can apply it to save your life, that we call it as wisdom. You are going to take action even though you have right to walk with the green signal, you make a decision not to do so or you just step back or try to avoid the situation. So this is termed as the actual wisdom, wisdom that you gained because of the knowledge, but knowledge eventually you got because of the information that you have in hand. That is in fact is the data. So original data that you have in hand can be turned into the actual informations or then eventually it can be turned into the knowledge and finally you are extracting the wisdom out of this data. Again coming on to this uh, feature of data knowledge wisdom, we are still talking about this Mount Everest uh, here, the final part. So data is often assumed to be least abstract concept, information the next least and the knowledge the most abstract. So we can say about data, information and knowledge. Data are often the least abstract concept, information is the next least abstract and finally the knowledge is the most abstract. So this way with this view, data becomes uh, information by interpretations. So you have to interpret the data. For example, the height of Mount Everest generally is considered as data. A book on Mount Everest geological characteristics may be considered as information. So the climber's guidebook contains practical information on the best way to reach Mount Everest peak by considering some knowledge. Yes, all the numbers, all the data that you have in that guidelines book, it is not just the information. In fact, it is considered to be a knowledge that has been experienced. Uh, candidates have been giving out those information in that book. So this is another uh, types, a uh, structured and unstructured data. As you can see here, a structured data is a well organized data. It is quite neat. You have everything, every information. For example, if you have data, you may have name, you, have, you may have date of birth, you may have actual all details precise and clear. That is a structured data. Unstructured data, on the other hand, you do not have any information clearly like the data model is not defined, it, the system is not organized. Typically you do not know exactly uh, what the data is sometimes. Sometimes you have numerics and alphanumerics characters are inside, so it, it might be confusing. So with this, uh, in, uh, with this thought we can think about what 
the real data that we get from the real world look like. The most of the raw data that we get from the real world are unstructured data. Yes, that's what um, even Seagate predicts that by 2025, we are going to have like 163 zettabytes of data and majority of them is going to be unstructured. When it is unstructured, we have to make it a structured one. We have to make it an organized one. So that's where the question of uh, data analysis comes in. Once we understand the data itself, you may have to think about data analysis as well as data analytics. So I'll come back to this point uh, of data analy analysis and analy analytics. Basically, analytics is an overreaching science or discipline that encompasses the complete management of data. And data analysis refers to the process of examining, transforming, and arranging a given data set in a specific way in order to study its individual parts and extract useful information. And moreover, analytics, we always uh, deal with a business insight like business analytics. Yeah. So with this thought, let's uh, look at some more information about analog and digital data. We know that all uh, data in nature, for example, sound signal, visual signal, any of those signals that we have in nature, they are all analog signal or continuous signal. So they are time varying features are there. But a digital signal is a discrete signal or discrete values. They are having a finite number of values. Since we know that the things in the nature are continuous and time varying analog signal. So when you have analog signal initially, you may have to convert into a digital one before we can process it. So some data in the nature are always analog, which means that you have to convert into digital form before you process that data. Let's see an example here. So if you have this uh, microphone, and microphone, they can actually convert the pressure sound signal into the electrical signals. And this electrical signal has to be converted into a digital signal. So this analog signal, when you convert into digital signal, we call it as digitization. We're actually digitizing the entire process. So in other words, uh, the actual sound was kind of analog, like smooth sinusoidal signal is given here. But this one you can actually discretize. In other words, you are actually quantizing here. We call it as quantization. You are actually quantizing into several digits or sound. So that's where the number comes in here, 12, 25, 13. And these are the quantized values. And eventually, you are going to turn these into binary digits. That's it. We are, in fact, started with the actual analog signal. Then we are changing it, it into a digital one. And eventually, we can also see that how the actual audio and video signals can be changed using various transforms. Basically, we also have uh, different types of transforms. They can transform these signals into analog, into digital signals. And after performing a digital transformation, you can also use uh, various other transforms like Fourier transform, cosine transform for analyzing such data. So here again, the final look at this analog and digital signal, you can see actual images that we see in nature is actually analog. But when a cap camera captures it, it actually digitizes the image. The image has been digitized here. So it has been sent out in the exact hexadecimal numbers. And finally, it has been converted into binary numbers. Again, what happens inside the camera is that after digitizing the information, you're actually also performing the encoding part is done. 
you encode the system and then before you view it, it will be decoded. So, as you can see here, the video originally it was analog and it has been captured, digitized and digitized values are stored in each pixel and each pixel values are in fact represented by some digits and eventually you can also represent those digits by means of binary number by which time you right now you have a data in hand, actual digital data and now once you have data in hand you can actually perform data analysis process. Well, that is what we have for today. We talked about various ways in which we can understand the data. There are different types of data. We talked about qualitative, quantitative data, structured and unstructured data and why data is important. Data in itself is just a information but this information can be converted into knowledge and eventually you can extract wisdom out of it. That is one of the prime concerns. In fact, this information about data is one of the basic things that we have to understand in this data science course. So, we are going to embark on other topics in the next lecture. We are going to look, look, we are going to look forward to this Markov chain process, transition matrix and uh, Markov based predictions. So, these are the topics for next class. I am looking forward to see you there. Until then, goodbye.